To keep power, Boris Johnson must retain the ex-Labour voting heartlands he won in 2019. But this area across the north and midlands of England, known as the Red Wall, is where his levelling up promise is going particularly badly. The majority of Johnson's Red Wall seats have fallen further behind London and the South East since he became Prime Minister. I went on a week-long tour of the region to investigate. So our first stop in the Red Wall is the northern seat of Sedgefield, which was represented by ex-Labour Prime Minister Tony Blair for 24 years. Now here in the town centre in Newton Aycliffe, in the constituency of Sedgefield, you can see the need for levelling up. Many of the shopping units here are boarded up or to let, and the local council wants to regenerate the area with millions of pounds of government funding. Clearly, this hasn't happened yet. Down the road is this disused railway yard at Ferry Hill, closed since the 1960s. Residents want a new train station here to connect them to jobs in nearby towns, the kind of project that seems ideal for levelling up. But Ferry Hill reopening is currently a distant prospect. The government in Westminster is looking at the proposal, but hasn't yet given it the green light. Our next stop in the Red Wall is Wakefield in Yorkshire, where voters will soon give their verdict on Boris Johnson at an upcoming by-election. Wakefield has one of the worst crime rates in the country, and quality of transport is a key issue for voters. Indeed, the latest data shows that government spending on transportation per head at the last count in London and the South East was £1,129. That compares to just £499 here in Yorkshire. 40 miles west, is the seat of Hayward and Middleton. Since Johnson became Prime Minister, the salary gap here with London has grown, housing is less affordable, and it hasn't received levelling up funds. And what's so interesting about places like Hayward is that the margin of victory for the Conservatives in 2019 was really quite slim. It was less than 700 votes. And that kind of slim marginality is seen across many Red Wall seats. It would only take a small swing back to the opposition and Boris Johnson's parliamentary majority would be in trouble. Our final stop in the Red Wall is Stoke-on-Trent, where the government has promised 500 civil service jobs out of London to a new site. This is a potential location for that site, but the move hasn't happened yet. There's an ongoing negotiation between the national government and the local council on where to put the site, and the jobs haven't yet come. The bottom line for Johnson is that time is ticking, and if he wants to stay in Downing Street, he needs to deliver for the Red Wall.